Welcome, everybody. Uh, the upcoming 25 minutes, we're going to talk about automation and orchestration and some experiences from the field. My name is uh, Victor van der Berg. I'm a solution architect at uh, PQR, which is a uh, system integrator in the Netherlands. Um, you can uh, find me on the internet, Twitter, Victorious, with three S's at the end. And uh, my website is uh, victorious.nl. And I want to start this, uh, this session with a, a nice picture. Uh, does anyone, uh, anyone knows, know what, where, where this picture is taken? Any idea? Car factory. Car factory, yes. Volkswagen. No, not Volkswagen. No. Tesla. 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 Yeah, it's Tesla. This is the factory of uh, Tesla, uh, Tesla Motors in uh, the US, in the Fremont, California. Cool. And uh, what you see here is their uh, assembly line of the, the Model S. And uh, if you look to the picture, what, what notice me is that there are no people near the assembly line. If you look carefully, you see somebody here on the left. There's a person standing, a worker. Over there is a worker, and in the back there are also some people. But the car is produced uh, using robots, only robots on the assembly line. So it's an automated process. Uh, and this, uh, for, for, for um, Tesla, this is very important because they deliver a, a very um, a consistent result, a consistent product, high quality, and they can produce it pretty fast. I have another question. Who's this? Nicholas Tesla? Nicholas Tesla. No, not. Henry Ford. Henry Ford, yes. Henry Ford, yes, this is Henry Ford. Because what, what Tesla is doing is not so new. 1913, Mr. Henry Ford was the first uh, man that thought of an assembly line for car production. The Model T uh, actually uh, launched on the market in 1908, was at that time already the cheapest car available. And Henry Ford uh, said, I want to, to make the car even cheaper. I want to lower prices. So he thought of this assembly line and um, a way to produce a car on the assembly line, to automate the construction of the car. 84 steps, workers were trained to only work at one of those 84 steps. And he reduced production time of this Model T Ford from 12 hours back to two and a half hours. So that's a great improvement. The car bay became available for uh, the, the, the mass for a lot of people. And more people can, uh, could afford a car. And uh, the car was, uh, uh, it was a great way of uh, standardization because you can buy this car in every color, at least it was black. So this is Mr. Henry Ford. OK, let's bring this to IT. What can we do in IT with automation? Why, why do we want to automate processes in IT? Well, what I have seen in the project I uh, participated in is that people want to automate stuff in IT to reduce costs, to save time, to create, uh, get a more consistent result to, uh, um, they need less people to do repetitive tasks and people that are, that were doing those repetitive tasks can do more interesting work now or are available for other tasks. So there are a few re reasons to go to, uh, to use automation in IT. Another big advant advantage when you use uh, automation in IT is that you can provide self-service. If you talk about automation, you're always also talking about self-service, self-service provisioning, self-service portal, uh, uh, and it is a way for users to request IT services from the IT department. So you don't need to call or to send an email to some system administrator, no, just go to the portal and request the resources you need. So what are the use cases I've seen so far for automation in IT? Well. The most important use case for me, I've been working on for now two years, is lifecycle management. So this is all about requesting a virtual machine, building the virtual machine, deploy it, then use it, then at a point in time it maybe expires and it is disposed. Lifecycle management. Maybe you want to uh, just deploy the virtual machine, but you can also include application deployment in this process. Another use case, and this is a use case 
my colleagues are working on. Maybe somebody can open the door and we have some more attendees. Another use case for uh, automation is, uh, is in the VDI space. There is tooling available in the VDI space that allows you to request end user applications uh, through a self-service provisioning portal. So a user is running, for example, a VDI desktop. He wants to add a new application uh, to his desktop, for example, Adobe Reader. He goes to a portal, requests the application, and it is deployed automatically. Now, in this session, I will focus on the first case, so lifecycle management, because that's what I've been working on the last two years. So if we talk about automation and then lifecycle management, we talk about automation in the data center. And if you look at the data center, we have our hyper-converged infrastructure or maybe traditional infrastructure available. On top of that, we are running virtualization solutions. We might be talking about software-defined data center. And on the left side, you see the automation solution. An automation solution, when we talk about data center automation, uh, spans the entire stack. So from the hardware to the virtualization stack to the virtualization management tooling. On top, well, on top here you see the self-service portal because if you have automated processes in your environment, you can provide services through this self-service portal. If you're using public cloud resources, you can uh, extend your automation initiative to public cloud because most public cloud services have APIs available and if you have APIs available, you can automate uh, the resources. Okay, if we're talking about automation orchestration, there are a few things you have to think about. Uh, first of all, if you want to run an automation project, the first step is that it's very important you have a standardized, stand, standardized environment, yes. Because if you have no standardization in your environment, uh, automation will become very difficult. You have to have uh, the processes in place which describe, for example, how you deploy your virtual machine. Okay, if you have defined the, those standards, you have to consolidate your um, processes to the standards. So this is not about server consolidation, this is about using the standards you have defined in your organization. Virtualization is an important part if you are talking about automation orchestration. With virtualization, you create logical containers, for example, virtual machines, but also logical networks, logical storage volumes. And those logical items are representing a standard, and a standard is something you can automate. Then we have automation and orchestration. And sometimes people ask, what's the difference between automation and, what is or uh, and uh, orchestration? Well, good question. Personally, I think that automation is more about a um, separate initiative. So a PowerShell script or maybe one workflow or a JavaScript, whatever. That is, that is what we call automation. If we deploy a uh, framework um, with all the automation uh, initiatives combined in that, in that uh, framework, including a self-service portal, then we are talking about orchestration. So orchestration is more like the complete solution. Automation is more about separate initiatives. Okay. Uh, are, is our automation then a part of orchestration? Is that what you're saying? That's the way I see it. Okay. But on the other hand, a lot of people are always talking about automation orchestration. Yeah. So, but this is this is the way I think you know, I'm I'm looking at it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now we want to start with. Uh, with automation orchestration. When, when is automation beneficial? Well, it's uh, specifically beneficial if we have a lot of repetitive tasks. So if you're deploying a lot of virtual machines each day, it's beneficial to think about automation orchestration. If your environment is not that dynamic and everything is in place and it's, it's most of the time the same, yeah, there's not much to automate. So a lot of repetitive tasks, uh, then it's um, yeah, a good idea to think about uh, automation. Consistent result. If, the, if this is very important for you, automation orchestration can help here because if you have automated your deployment uh, of the virtual machine, then the result will be the same each time over and over again. 
response time, Redu uh, the reduction of response time. So you request a virtual machine and you have to wait five days. I've seen it at different customer sites. Five days, maybe two weeks, may maybe even longer. Uh, I've worked at several, several uh, governmental organizations and we've reduced response time or provisioning time from five days back to only four hours. Because if you automate your uh, yeah, virtual machine deployment, you're actually looking across silos, talking to different um, uh, departments in the organization to backup, storage, network, maybe system center configuration manager and you're bringing all those different silos together in your automated deployment process. And this will reduce uh, time. It's also uh, very important to think about costs versus benefits, because um, deploying an automa uh, automation orchestration solution will cost you time, and it might cost you a lot of time. And this will cost money, of course, so the, the costs must uh, not away the benefits. Yeah. That's important. Okay, well, let's go back to our lifecycle management picture. We see here the uh, six steps. Request a virtual machine, build a virtual machine, provision it, uh, manage it, maybe it, uh, it expires, and then it's disposed. Um, an important part um, of each automation project I've been part of is um, working on integrations with third-party solutions. For example, in the building phase, most of the time we want to create a computer account in Active Directory for the virtual, machines, virtual machine that we are deploying. We want to retrieve a IP address from, for example, Infoblox or another IP address management solution. Integration with backup maybe a Puppet if you're using Linux, or maybe System Center Configuration Manager. You want to install agents, and those agents uh, should integrate, integrate with these solutions. Um, if the virtual machine is deployed, uh, you want, may, maybe you want to deploy what they call day two operations. That are operations that are executed on the deployed virtual machine. For example, you want to add the virtual machine to some kind of disaster recovery solution. Or you want to change the backup schedule, or maybe you want, just want to create a, a, a snapshot. All these actions are available through the self-service portal, so users can request those actions themselves. And then the workflow uh, runs uh, behind the scenes and, and the task you, uh, you uh, um, request is executed. And of course, at the end, if you dispose the virtual machine, you want to remove the Active Directory computer account, you want to remove the IP address from Infoblox, and you maybe also want to remove the object from Puppet and or SCCM. So this is a typical life cycle for virtual machines, if it's only about virtual machine deployment. I've also seen use cases that we have virtual machine deployment, virtual machine deployment and application deployment. So then you add an extra strap to the automation process and you're actually automating the installation of a server application, for example, a database server, middleware, or a web-based front-end. That's also something you see quite often if you talk about automation orchestration. Okay, so some important things to think about if you talk about automation orchestration. It's important that there is a standard deployment process available. If it's not available, the first step is to determine what is the deployment process, otherwise you cannot automate it. There should be a repetitive task, because repetitive tasks uh, are uh, good candidates for automation orchestration. Uh, if we work with virtual and logical resources, that will make uh, things a lot easier. You can, of course, also automate a physical deployment. That is something that's possible, but it's more difficult because if you have an HP server, then it's different than Dell, and then it's different than IBM or whatever. So, um, you have to think about integration. So integration with Active Directory, System Center, Configuration Manager, and all the 
uh, things I mentioned on the previous slide. You have to think cross silo. Um, I've been working a lot with the VMware solution for automation orchestration, and sometimes the project starts uh, at the VMware team, and then you're talking to the VMware guys. But there is more to automate, so you have to have a broader vision and you have to think cross silo and also talk to, well, for example, the, uh, AD guys, backup guys, storage guys. Self-service portal, always part of a, a project uh, if, you, if you talk about automation and orchestration. Okay, some experience from my side. The first important question, well, who's in the lead for the orchestration project? And that's actually what I was just talking about. Uh, if you're talking to the VMware team, then you have only a limited scope available of the entire process. So try to broaden your scope and to talk of to, uh, and, and try to think cross silo. Who is the requester and who is the provider? Um, for example, of um, if you're automating virtual machine deployment and you let um, end users request virtual machines, who's gonna pay for that? Because you're using resources. Uh, after virtual machine, uh, sorry, after virtualization was introduced, we had a lot of problems with virtual machine sprawl. Well, the same counts here because you're giving away um, functionality to your end users, they can provide if they can request virtual machines and you want to be in control for on who is using what. So that's important. Is there a standard, standardized deployment process available? If it's there, is there a process description available? And always investigate if the, the process, the way the virtual machines are deployed, if it fits or, or yeah, if it fits the real world. So talk to the different people in the organization to learn how they actually deploy the virtual machines. Thank you very much. It's now time. Thank you.